Ladies and gentlemen, here's my mom and daddy from my friend from that. Posthumously, they'd give him an Academy Award. Mr. Franklin would be Gentle Ben. Mr. Lincoln would be A.B. again. Who could make up such a government if an actor were president? Hi, honey. I'm home. The traffic was incredible. What a day. Did you bring the fried chicken? Excuse me, dear. I'm having a cramp. Have you been cleaning the sink? Never mind about that. Let's dance. Oh, nuts. I just dropped my contact lens down the back of your dress. Try this new dance. You take your right hand, slap your forehead, shake your fingers, then throw your arm in the air. That's a snap. You slap your forehead, shake your fingers, and throw your arm in the air. If you'd care to sit down, I'll get the refreshments. Here, have a coffee. <laughs> Too much caffeine making you edgy? Why not switch to a decaffeinated coffee? No thanks, honey. I only drink real coffee. But I've got some real good stuff. It's a prescription from Marcus Welby. That's terrible. I've tried to be a good wife. But I just can't take it anymore. What? 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 It's your lips. They don't match your words. Neither do yours. So what? It's driving me crazy. That's what. Well, you know as well as I do that if we want to be involved in politics, we have to learn how to say two different things at once. Yes, dear. <laughs> our guest, a singer and a poet, Mr. Graham Card. Dorothy is quiet, she looks in sleep. Lying on the furs you laid down for her The waving grasses, they look so calm And they ride on ponies with some wings on their heels And 
and the rains are made of sun. Dorothea's children, they have her gift. She could tell fortune by the bane of the moon. And when the ponies get to restless, and they let out into the open plains Dorothea calls to them again A supernatural one You may think that she's not easy to find But she is around everywhere that the big bear shines And all a-glowing were the big fires As she favored with her magical ways To keep the darkness away from the Indian world Morning, class. Today we are going to study some Latin. That's right, Latin. So that when you go home, you'll be able to say to your mothers, quit fucky Amos and she'll box your little ears for you. <laughs> We're going to start with the Latin verbs. Now, most Latin verbs come in four forms. For instance, the verb to shiver in Latin is shiverous, shivero, shaky, freezing. Perhaps I should put that on the board. Hear us? Digging! Now, most Latin verbs are conjugated in this way. The verb to fall is slippio slippera folly bumpums. Uh, the verb to fail, failio failera flunky suspendums. This may refer to all of you. It may also be of some assistance for you to know that there are several English words that also occur in Latin. Uh, for example, the English word sum, spelled S-U-M, is very similar, very similar to the Latin word sum, spelled S-U-M. Perhaps I should put that on the board. Oh, we have the English word sum. The Latin word, sum. Right, now this here is the English word pronounced sum. This is the Latin word pronounced sum. 
<laughs> Did you notice the difference? Fine then, would you explain it to me? <laughs> also, I would like you to know that the English word therefore in Latin is ergo. Ergo! Not to be confused with the Toronto ergos. <laughs> Sorry? The English word ivy, ivy in Latin, of course, is the number four. Right. It may also be of some interest to you to know that there are some Latin phrases that are used extensively in the English language. For instance, the Latin phrase, Wenny Weedy Standy, which means, I came, I saw, and I could not get a seat. Caveat <laughs> emptor, which means, nothing's under warranty. <laughs> and the very popular, Donna Nobis Pax, which means, Give us packs, preferably six packs. <laughs> now, many of you may not realize this, but Latin has not been used as a language for almost 1,000 years. But this, of course, is what makes it so exquisitely boring, and this is, of course, why I'm teaching it. <laughs> Those of you who do well in Latin will be allowed to take hieroglyphics. <laughs> because in this country particularly, it's a tremendous advantage if you can speak two or three languages so that no one will have a bloody clue what you're talking about. It works very well for the Prime Minister, doesn't it? Class! Dismissed. That reminds me of somebody. <laughs> You know, uh, with the name of the show being Smith and Smith, you kind of get the impression that it's a family affair, and it is. Those are our sons who introduce us, and my mother helps me with my clothes Isn't on the show. Isn't that sweet? Yes, my father, of course, is financing the venture. No, <laughs> he isn't. My, um, my father is too busy on the golf course, really, to uh, take much interest in what we do for a living, but uh, one day, I believe, he, he did have a conversation with his favorite son-in-law. Well, he likes to tell me stories. You know, that one about you. No, I won't say that one. Because um, they cleaned up the furniture and everything. Uh, he told me a story one time he went to Calgary in the early 50s. And he sat me down and he would bought me a drink, so I listened. Uh, he, went on a, he went on a train. I think it was a CN or something. And he got a roomette. Oh, yeah. Now, a roomette, apparently, there was a little wash stand and a toilette you like and a bed that goes up into the wall and the bed is a, a metal plate type thing now it's great room everything. the problem is the bed takes up the whole room so when he would fold the bed down it would go over the sink over the little toilet <laughs> the whole deal so he thought well this is fine so it came to uh, bedtime on the train he had like an overnight thing so uh, he has to go out into the hall you know to get his uh, to get the bed down so he goes out into the hall with a suit on, then he drops the bed down, then he climbs into the bed, takes off his suit, uh, takes off his suit, I'm not going to go into more detail than that, <laughs> and uh, gets into bed, right? Now he wakes up in the middle of the night, and nature is calling very loudly. <laughs> he has to grab some clothes, go out into the hall, put the bed up, then go back in and sit himself down on the toilet. <laughs> and while he's sitting there, the bed lets go. <laughs> You're talking 200 pounds on the head. And his biggest problem was he didn't dare call anyone for help. <laughs> oh, well. He's in the home now, so he's fine. Which is where he should be. You shouldn't talk about things like that on television. I know. Actually, you know, his daughter turned out really, really well. And, well, thank you so much. And, I'll take my jacket uh, She's going to go turn out right now. Why don't you go and... Uh, I'm getting ready for that. Can you sing a little right tune? Now. Can I help you with your jacket? <laughs> Here's more egg.
soul She can bring him such misery Hi, we're here at the Comedy Club this week to see Mike McDonald. <laughs> I had a couple of days off the other day and I dropped in to see my parents. And it was amazing. I haven't been home in about a year, but certain things never change. For example, my mother. I opened the door and immediately there was a sandwich in my face. <laughs> <laughs> you want some food? You want some potatoes? I got some steaks. Come on. <laughs> Please, Mom, just let me get in and unpack the bags first. <laughs> you know, it's like amazing. She used to really embarrass me because sometimes like my friends would come over and they would sleep over. Four o'clock in the morning, they'd be sleeping. <laughs> potatoes? What is this? <laughs> Mike, tell your mother to beat it. <laughs> Mom, they're not hungry, okay? Like, please, get in. <laughs> You know, it's amazing, like, they wake up in the morning with intravenous in their arms. <laughs> but that's enough, <laughs> we're leaving. It was totally amazing. It was really neat to see my father, though, again. He was like, <laughs> don't get up. <laughs> I was like, the only way I can wake him is turn the TV channel. <laughs> what was that? I was watching that. Turn that back. Oh, hi. How you doing? You're home. Okay, who are you? <laughs> they pay you for that stuff? Okay. <laughs> it was, it was funny. <laughs> it was either, I'm, I'm reminded of my father every time I'm on stage in one particular fashion because that spotlight in front of me is like my father in the early 60s was a home movie freak, right? He had one of those old Bell and Howell series, you know, with the ramp and the four floodlights, right? <laughs> it's like football night games, like, ah, turn those lights off! <laughs> I can't see, where am I passing to? <laughs> Somebody's taking the McDonald, get that McDonald guy out of here. <laughs> it's like, we have, like, uh, my father used to film everything. We have, like, 14,000 home movies of a guy and his wife coming over. Visitors, you know? They all look like this. simply great forest food is absolutely first rate our only job is to procreate 24 hours a day up in the bush or down in the bog up the stump or in a hollow log no bad connections and no misconceptions of love Funny, but a bunny makes a wonderful wife. It's a heck of a hair-raising life. <laughs> it's not that we're perverted, no siree. The carrots are loaded with vitamin E. 
And no one in the forest owns a color TV, so there isn't much else to do. A bunny goes down to the river to float. Before she turns around, she's got another fur coat. In all kinds of weather, you'll find us together somewhere. Dating with mating is our shameless luck. Nobody passes the buck. The government's telling us, hold it, Jack. You hot-blooded rabbit's gonna have to cut back. All those hops have made too many crops who've left too many drops around. Rabbits have habits we don't want in our town. So you guys had better cut down Well, I'm trying to quit, but I've started to shake The bunnies have birth control pills they take But all they're getting is a migraine headache And learning to say Not tonight People say abstention is right No wonder they're always uptight Not again! <laughs> Thank you, and help us thank Graham Card and Mike McDonald.